What up everyone? This is Dan from datainterview.com. Today we're going to cover a coding problem that involves calculating Pearson correlation. There are a few things that I would like to just briefly talk about when it comes to approaching data science coding problems. First and foremost, it is not like lead code or software engineering type of problems where you're going to be asked to solve some data structures and algorithms. Those are more for software engineers or ML engineers. For the most part, data science interview tends to focus on pandas manipulation, SQL, or statistical coding, kind of like the problem that we're about to solve here. Now, what is statistical coding? So what statistical coding is, is that it's a assessment of your statistical theoretical knowledge. So common statistical theories like Pearson correlation and whether you know the formula and how to actually express that in code. And so in this particular case, um, the expectation is being able to calculate the Pearson correlation coefficient using a vanilla Python. So you're not allowed to load any library in this particular case here. Now, something that you want to clarify with the interviewer is with whether you're allowed to load any libraries at all, and if so, what specific libraries you're allowed to do so. Depending on interviewer by interview cases, chances are that there's going to be some variability around that for this specific type of problem. So let's get started with how we're going to actually solve this. So first and foremost, let's think about the Pearson correlation. So the Pearson correlation has a range value from minus 1.0 to 1.0. And it is a measure of linearity between X and Y. The so stronger that relationship between an X and a Y, uh, higher the value toward that 1.0. 1.0 mean perfect correlation, meaning there's a direct relationship between the X and the Y. And a minus one means that there's a perfect inverse relationship. Zero, on the other hand, means that there is no relationship. It's sort of like a horizontal line. So here we have our function, calculate Pearson. And there's already a template that we can go ahead and use right here. So list one and list two. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just output some arbitrary value in this case. So I'm just going to specify the x1 uh, as, let's just say, 1, 2, 3, and y as 1, 2, and 4. And I'm going to go ahead and output the function right here, so Pearson correlation, x and y. And right now, this doesn't output anything. So I'm just going to go ahead and do return, let's just say, x and y. So if I were to just go ahead and run this, I should expect basically the exact same list as what we had initially intended. Okay, so this is good. So this is this means that, all right, this function, um, I can go ahead and write the logic of how to actually calculate the Pearson correlation. Now, in order for us to think about how we're gonna solve the Pearson correlation, let's first of all, just think about the formula for the Pearson correlation. So the formula for the Pearson correlation is that it is essentially a normalized version of covariance formula. So it is the covariance of the X and a Y divided by the standard deviation, so STD of this X times the STD of this Y. So this is gonna be the denominator in this case. And in order for us to solve this problem, we can think about dividing and conquer this. So let's think about the covariance formula first and foremost. So what is the covariance formula? So the covariance formula in essence is the following. So it is a sum of the x minus x mean. And this x minus x mean is multiplied by the difference of the following, which is y minus y mean. And so this right off the bat gives us the unnormalized version of the relationship between x and a y, where the range values could be minus infinity all the way through positive infinity. Now, this would also be divided by n because we have to basically take the average of these two differences that are multiplied and across the sum. Now, in our case, we also need our standard deviation formula. So just a brief recap on what standard deviation formula is. The standard deviation formula is the following. So it's the sum of the x minus x mean and this is this difference right here is squared. And it's also divided by n. Now this right here would give us the variance. And so for us to get the standard deviation, we would have to standardize it by multiplying it by the square root. 
or in this case, it would be double asterisk followed by one divided by two or just 0.5. Okay, so these are the building blocks of how we're going to actually solve this. Now, one thing I will just convey here, simply put, we don't really need the N because the thing is that once we have the, at the numerator, an N, and then in the denominator, we have two standard deviations that are multiplied. The N times N would give you N squared. But then what we end up doing is that we're going to be square rooting both of these N. So you're going to end up with one N on the denominator and then um, one N on the numerator. So both of them cancel out. So ultimately, what we really need to think about is the sums. So I'm just going to get rid of the sums right here. So with that established, um, now what I need to do is just write this, express this pseudocode in the actual code. So first of all, I actually need the mean here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the mean. So for me to calculate the mean, I need the following. So the mean one equals the sum of list one. And then I need to divide that by N. So I also need the length in this case. So I'm going to do N equals len of that list one. That's going to extract the length. And then I also need the mean of Y as well. So I'm going to do mean two equals the sum of list two. And I'll also divide that by N. Now I just want to validate this code real quick. So I just want to output mean one, mean two, and let's see what we get when we run it. All right, so this gives us the output that we should be expecting here. So let's keep going. So, so now that we have calculated the mean, the next thing that we want to think about is the numerator in this case. So we can go ahead and calculate the numerator, which is the covariance without the n. And the covariance is the following formula that we had already resolved. And so we have to write an iteration where we take a zip. So I'm going to do cove equals the sum of the following, which is going to be the x minus the mean one. And this is going to be a multiply by the y minus mean two. And I'll pluck out x, y in zip list one and list two. So this should give us the covariance without the n that we need. And I just want to validate the output of this. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'll put this real quick. So along with the mean one, mean two, and covariance, let's see what we get. Okay, so that's good. All right. So now that I've calculated covariance, what I need is standard deviation. So as I mentioned, the formula for the standard deviation is the, um, so what I need is the X minus the X mean. So mean one, and then this needs to be squared. And then I need to pluck out each element from this list, in which case it's being passed from list one. So do four X in less one. And this needs to be summed. So at the moment, this will be the numerator for the variance, but we know that for standard deviation, we actually have to do, we need to raise it by the power of 0.5, which is basically just another way to express square root function. So this will be the standard deviation of the first list, but then we need a standard deviation for the second list. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this and call it SCD2. This will be mean two and the list two. And then what I will do now is I'm just gonna go ahead and calculate the correlation, right? So I can put together the standard deviations along with the covariance and the way that the correlation formula would be, it would be covariance divided by STD1. And this STD1 is multiplied by STD2. 
And then this result right here, what it specifies is that we need the result to be rounded to two. So we're just gonna go ahead and do correlation. So round core two. And so when I run the following, what I get is 0.98 for the following inputs. Now, if I were to maybe test the exact same values here, so one, two, three, one, two, three for both, and I were to run this, once again, I get, uh, so this time I get a perfect 1.0. Okay, so I feel pretty confident about this result right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and submit this, and this is gonna test various inputs against this function. And what we end up with is a perfect score. So for the uh, for this case, our, we have a expected output of one and we get the following output of one. The same thing here. So this is a validation that this is a valid code. Now there's a few things that I just wanna also modify as well. We also wanna capture some edge cases. So things like when the shape of the list are not the not are not exactly the same. So the way we're gonna do this is once we have plucked out the length of this list one, what we wanna return is an error if the list, list two is not the exact same shape. So how are we gonna go about doing that? So if this len is of the list two is not the same as n, then we shouldn't proceed with the computation here. So the way we should be up is we would raise some sort of a value error. So value error, the lengths of list one and list two are not the same. If we can go ahead and test this output real quick. So I'm just gonna go ahead and change the output and I'm gonna run it. And okay, so this is exactly what we want. We want some sort of an error back saying that, okay, the lists are not the same. Okay. So now we have a valid function that calculates the Pearson correlation, and it can also handle edge cases where the less one and less two lengths are not the same. So this is the type of question that you should expect in the data scientist interview. And if you wanna practice more, check out datainterview.com slash coding. And I'll see you in the next video.